right, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Scott Dysart. I'm with the Linguistic Institute here in PIAP. Um, and this demonstration is going to be on speech analyzer. Um, a fair warning, I am not a phonetician or anything of the stretch. So when it comes to talking about spectrograms and what you can do with them and how you can tweak them, that's not something I can help you with. But I can talk about how to get to the tools and how to, to make the tools work. So to begin with, to, to use um, speech analyzer in the way I'm going to demonstrate it, you're going to need, of course, speech analyzer itself. And you're also going to need IPA helps uh, uh, to, 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 to use it properly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this now. I've already got those things installed on my computer. I'm going to hide Zoom and I'm going to maximize this. All right, so this is Speech Analyzer. And I will be using, uh, Terry Gibbs made some manuals that can be available that, that come with the program when you install it under help and training. I will actually be working through the student manual for most of it. So a lot, none of this is new to me. I'm just working through what Terry has shown. And yeah, so that comes with it. That speech analyzer also comes with some sample files that you can work with. I will be using those as well for most part. And those are found when you install their samples. All right, so I'm going to cancel this. I have the sample file called He Danced Yesterday up and running. And this is the basic view. You can see the waveform and you can see, I'm not even sure, this is the auto pitch. And so at the top, you can see a lot of these, these are transcription lines. You can add or remove these as you need. I'm gonna remove some of them just to reduce clutter. You can actually get rid of all of them, but I'm just gonna remove some of them. Uh, you can go to graph, transcription bar, and I'm gonna remove tone. I'm gonna remove it from this graph and I'm gonna get rid of phonemic graph, transcription bar, phonemic, uh, this graph, and I'm gonna get rid of gloss national as well. And if you need those, you can add them back. You can add data to them. This doesn't delete any data. It just hides them from view. So you, you have more space. So that's showing how you can get rid of some of these bars. The, the thing you can do with speech analyzers, you can listen to your, your audio and then you can, you can really dig down into what, what you're hearing. The, the basic function is the playback. I'm gonna demonstrate that here with this nice little cassette uh, icon. So here is the player, and you basically you just hit the play button. Nagsala idi kalman. Nagsala idi kalman. All right, and you can slow it down. Nagsala idi kalman. Or you can speed it up. Nagsala idi kalman. Depending upon your need, I'm going to put it back down to 100%, which is normal. I can go down. Oh, sorry. I can just type here, right? A little down. Uh, or I can just type. All right. Another thing you can do is repeat. I have in my mind seeing videos of linguists of old hunker down over a desk with a reel-to-reel -reel tape setting to repeat the same phrase over and over again. And this is what this mimics. So you hit the play button. Nagsala idi kalman. Nagsala idi kalman. Nagsala idi kalman. I'm going to stop that. And if you think it's taking too long. If, if the time between re recordings playing is too short, you can increase it by milliseconds. Nagsala idi kalman. Nagsala idi kalman. So that's the playback. Nagsala idi kalman. I'm going to hit the stop button. The one thing I found is I have a tendency when I hit OK, I think I'm making a setting and OK accepts the setting. OK closes this. So don't hit OK when you think you're wanting play. You really want play and okay, it closes the box. Okay. So the next thing you can do with speech analyzers, you can identify segments. So I'm going to isolate this section right here. You can double click. Actually, you can uh, uh, get back here. Of course, it's not doing it what I expected it to do right now. You can. Okay, I hit shift click, bring up the green bars and the red bar. The green bar is the end of your segment. The red bar is, sorry, the red bar is the end of the segment. The green bar is the beginning. And so I'm, I'm bringing, I'm isolating this, this section. And in addition to having the cassette, you have these up here. 
This is to play the whole file. Nagsala idikal man. This is up play the end cursor. Idikal man. This is the up to the beginning cursor. Nagsala id up to the end cursor, sorry. And this is between cursor. Nagsala id Nagsala id so if you want to isolate a section of it, you can do that. And um, going back to the cassette player, I, I didn't show this here. That when you have the play, you can double up the ability to repeat with play between the cursors. And so now it will just play repeating between the cursors. And hit the, I almost hit the OK button, which would have closed it. I'm going to hit the play button. And you can just keep playing that until you you understand what you're hearing. So I'm going to hit, hit the OK button to close this. All right. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, there is a zoom here, your traditional magnifying glass, move in, move out. If you have a trackpad that's set up for it, you can pinch in and pinch out. Another interesting thing here is this is zoom cursor. So this will zoom, this will expand the space between the cursors all the way out to where it, the cursors fill the space. So I'm going to bring that. And this zooms full, brings it back to normal. So that's zooming in, zooming out. And I've demonstrated the playing back. As you also notice down here at the bottom, you have timestamps. My thing gets in the way. The first timestamp. It, right, if you look at the screen, it's 2412. That is the green one. You can see it moving back and forth. So this, the timestamp start is right now is 0.2443. That corresponds with the, the time here in seconds. The, the next one, that's 5.02, that's duration. That's time between the green and the red. So then if I drag this to the right, or drag it to the left, you can see that the duration, the one in the middle is, is expanding and contract, is getting bigger, getting smaller based on where this is moving. So that is time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this waveform as an example. And I'm going to show you, so you can use any audio you have. So you, you have a recorder, like your, um, your, your, field recorder you take out into the field and you're just recording with that you can use you can get those in waveform and bring them into speech analyzer can open them up just like any file or you can actually record in speech analyzer i'm going to show that here i'm going to hit the record and this brings up a recorder and it must like any other recorder the green bars indicate activity the red button is record stop um, play and stop pause record level playback level I'm just going to use it out of the box. And one of the examples that Terry used is the, the, the minimal pair color and color. So I'm going to record myself saying the English word color as in shade or pigment, the color red, and also English word color as in polo shirts have a, have a color. So I'm going to record myself. Color, color, color. My favorite color is blue. Collar, collar, collar. Polo shirts have a collar. I hit the stop button and then I hit play. Collar, collar, collar. My favorite color is blue. Collar, collar, collar. Polo shirts have a collar. I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the done button. And now you can see the waveform for what I said. You can see my word listy kind of words here, and you can see my phrase, and then you can see my second uh, set of saying the word color, and then my second set of phrasing. And you can see they look a little different. Let me go down to get in my uh, minimize this. All right, I'm getting myself caught up on my my notes working down Terry's thing. All right. Right. Okay. Recording. I'm using, I'm at his recording. All right. Record. Okay. All right. So I'm going to save this. 
save as. I'm going to bring it into my audio program. I'm going to make a new folder called Scott's second test. I'm going to record, put my audio in here, call, call this caller, caller, hit save. All right. So the things you can do here is again, you can expand, you can get, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can look at the difference. If you want to isolate, let's say you're in a situation where you've just got the microphone running and you're recording an awful lot, but you don't, you, while you want the big file as your source, just as for keeping forever and always, you want to have little files for, for different things. Like I, I want to have an example of color as in the, the, the color blue as a separate file from color as in the color of a shirt. So I'm going to highlight the first set of color. I did a con control click. Oh, I lost it. Control, ah, go back here. I'm going to go edit, copy. Now, if I could click on edit again, now I have a new option, paste as a new file. I'm going to click paste as new file. And now I have a new file. I'm going to save this, save as, just like any other thing. I'm just going to call this color. I'm going to close this. I close both. And now I'm going to come back to my original source. And I'm going to make a new file out of color as in the color of like color on a shirt. Click. Highlight, edit, copy, edit, paste as new file, file save, color, save. And I should be able to file close as opposed to closing both graphs. Okay, I did that. That's how I should have done it. All right, so now I have, I've, I've taken a large recording copied it into to multiple segments from one recording. And so now I want to, I'm gonna close my large file because while it's interesting, it's not useful for comparison. I'm gonna file close. Now I wanna, so color and color are minimal pairs. So I wanna see what the difference is. So I'm gonna open color. And I'm also going to open color. And so now I have them both open, but I can't, I cannot see both of them. But well, Windows, speech analyzers use the ability to tile windows. So I'm going to click on windows and I'm going to, you can either tile them horizontal to where they're all together. You can see them both, but that doesn't look very good. You can't see the waveform. Um, you can either, you can get rid of auto pitch. That should show you the waveform is if you want to, or I'm going to go to window tile vertical. So now I can see everything. I can see waveform. I can see auto pitch. I can see my, my graphs. So now I can see that I can look at both of them at the same time. And I can now, uh, begin to analyze, analyze these things. Um, this is a good time to show that you can set these graphs up as you like. So if I'm not using auto pitch, can actually remove it just, just clicking a little x here and it goes away and i can i'm going to get rid of the phonemic and tone here graph uh transcription bars get rid of phonemic uh this graph oh, this is the active one here graph uh transcription bar uh tone this graph and come over here to waveform Graph, transcription bars, tone, graph, transcription bars, phonemic. Okay. So now I have more space to, to look at what I'm doing. All right. So now I can see, see the difference. So, so I can hit the play button over here and call it and I can listen to it. I just want to hear the sentence because I'm, I'm seeing list effect in my words, but I want to hear it in, in, um, in use. Collar, ah, collar, collar. Polo shirts have a collar. I should have hit play between cursors. Actually, I play between cursor, between cursor. That's what I should have hit play. Actually, hit the okay, hit play button. Polo shirts have a collar. Or I could have done it right here. Polo shirts have a collar. 
Matt say I want to I want to move the end the beginning cursor. I just want to hear the word color in use. I don't need to hear the whole sentence. I can hit clip uh, control and that will move the green cursor over. Gives you more control. You can't see it on the screen, but I'm hitting um, control and the, the right arrow moving over. Now I can hit play between cursors. Color, color, color. Now I want to listen to color over here. So I'm coming over here, double clicking just on the word I wanted. I'm going to move the green cursor, the green line over to the left. Now I'm hitting shift and I'm going to move the red line over to the right, just making it easy. I hit play between cursor. Oh, come on, the zoom is in the way. Sorry about that. Color is. Color is. You can actually hear the sibilant coming out from the shirt. So I'm going to move that back over. I'm going to hit sh the shift and move the red line over a bit. And that should get rid of the S quality. Color is. It gets rid of it some. Color is. So now you can hear the difference. Color as in the color uh, blue. Uh, blue is my favorite color. And then colored shirt. Actually, oh, actually, I did the other way around. This polo shirts have colors, and this is blue is my favorite color. So you can hear the difference. All right. So I'm going to close both of these, and I'm going to go to Terry's example to show how to, to look for duration of a segment. Uh, portion to audio, da, da, da. duration. So I'm just working down Terry's thing. I'm going to go to file, op open, moving up to his samples, and I'm going to open up. Cut Judy, hit open, and yeah. So in this example, I'm going to hit the play button. Kadoche, kadoche, kadoche. So this is one word. Let's say I want to hear the duration of the stop, the duh. So I'm going to click. That's that's in this area. I'm going to hit the D, and I'm going to move my left cursor over. We'll move the right cursor, uh, the red over, shift. And then play between the cursors. That's almost spot on. All right. So, so now I want to see how long that is. I can look down here, the duration. Oops, my windows gets in the way. This, the, the timestamp between the two cursors is 0 0.0979. That's the duration of the, the, the stop in that word. Let's say in his examples, he has a minimal pair, Kajota. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open that and I want to t see how long the duration of the T is. So it's this word. Katoche. Katoche. So I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle where that T is. And I'm going to use the control arrow to move to where I think this, where it starts. And then I'm going to move the shift to where I. Shift arrow to where I think it ends. And you can kind of tell where the vowel, where the vowel begins. Let's hit play between the cursor. It's just about right. And so now you can see the duration of this is 0 0.1550. I'm going to go tile windows, tile vertical. So now I have both words up. This is katocha and this is katocha. And if I make this the active window, I can remind myself that that is 0 0.0979 as compared to the other one, it is 0 0.1550. So a, it may be that in this language that T is held longer or something, to, something interesting to, to, to look at. When you have an audio file, there's information about that that you may want to record. So that's this little I button here, file information. So it gives you the location of the thing when it was created or last edited. This is when I installed it on my computer, I guess. Uh, data, this is how long the whole thing is. Uh, source, this is a Dutch word. Um, if you want to get more information, if you know more about it, whether it's male speaker, female speaker, you can, inc um, you can include that here. And comments, um, this is, 
like free translation, like in Flex, if you have a, a text, free translation, it's what does this mean in a, like a trans, in a, a gloss? So Katocha is a, a girl's name. So, so that's Katocha. And then if I hit the OK button to come over here, information, comment, a present. And you can also do the duration of the vowel. So here, this, this, this is the A uh, vowel. I'm going to bring this over, actually control left to move the um, starting cursor, shift left to move the ending cursor, and hit the play button, the play between cursor. Got it. Got it. And I'm going to bring same thing over here and the other one. I'm going to control left and then shift left. And hitting the play between the cursors. Got. Got. Okay. So, so that you can tell that in Kadoja, uh, the distance is the time, the duration of the vowel is 0.1756 milliseconds, whereas in Kadoja, it is 0.1494. It's shorter. You can also look down in the auto pitch. And I, I noticed this, and again, I'm not a phonetician, so I can't explain why I'm seeing what I'm seeing, but you can kind of see that the katocha, uh, the pitch is rising up to get ready for the T, whereas it, it does not in katocha. It kind of continues to, it flattens and falls even more. So it's just kind of, I'm sure someone who knew exactly what that meant would be able to tell you exactly why that's, why that's happening, but it's, a speech analyzer can help you identify it. So that's duration. And then the next thing we're going to demonstrate is intensity. And again, we're going to pull from Terry's examples. I'm going to close these two. The word convict. And the other word, oops, sorry, open convict. Well, yeah, convict was the noun, convict is the verb. So these are examples of minimal pairs in English. And again, I'm going to go to Windows vertical tile, and I'm going to change the auto pitch. Go back here. Okay, we're gonna go to, we can change the graph types that we're looking at. So I'm gonna change this auto pitch. I'm gonna keep the waveform. Auto pitch, gonna graph type intensity. I'm gonna do the same over here. This is a good time to show you that in the graphs, you have different options. And then types, I'm gonna change this to intensity, but you have duration, change, and other options associated with pitch. So you can see that even though that um, in this word here, actually that should play the whole thing. Convict, convict. Convict, that is the, the verb convict and this one? Convict. You can hear the difference, the intensity of the vowel. But you want, let's say you want to figure, um, I'm getting down to where you can do this. So you're going to measure intensity by finding the high point. So that's for this first initial vowel, it's right here. And you can see the display measurement is. Uh, I'm, look, I'm looking at it's down here at the 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 the, dust, the db right here, and so you can tell that that's about the highest point. It, that, that's that's where you can see the difference. You can hear you can see the difference, and then if you come here to the next vowel, you can see the the change. And then if you, you can hear the difference between convict and convict, but this allows you to see the difference. See that this is an 18. This, this, the, the O vowel in convict is not that far off from the I vowel in convict. So this is um, showing you intensity of, of the vowels. And I'm going to go ahead and close the raw form for both vowels. 
and I'm going to change these to horizontal so you can kind of compare them looking at each other. Perhaps this is an easier way to see them, to see the difference. Okay, so speech analyzer can can um, measure a lot of other things. Um, speech analyzer can measure a lot of other things like fundamental frequency, foment frequencies in the spectrogram. I'm just going to show you on the left what these are. I, I can't explain them, and I'm not. I'm going to kind of move on to something else at this moment. So, but I'm going to close convict. And I'm going to change to waveform. And then I'm showing you on the left these presets. Here's waveform on its own. Here's waveform and auto pitch. Let me make this bigger. Waveform raw and tense. Waveform and spectrogram. Uh, waveform, spectrogram, and spectrum. And then waveform, spectrogram. And the F12. I'm not, I'm not, again, you would need someone who knows what these mean to be able to demonstrate how to, to look at them and, and see what you're looking at. All right, the next thing I want to demonstrate is transcription. And I have my audio file here. It's a recording I did earlier of caller and caller. I'm going to highlight a section, control highlight. I'm going to go here to M plus add markup. And you can see that brings these lines all the way up and down my section. I'm going to give it a reference. Here's your one. And then I'm going to give it a gloss English. This is colors in the hue. You can see I can type. And then I'm going to go to into phonetic. And I can either type with an IPA keyboard or I can go to the chart. And I'm going to go to continent. Aka, aka. Vowel. Ah. Continent. Allah. Vowel. Ah. And then I'm told that this is the R. Allah. Allah. And I'm not a phonetician, so someone who, yeah, so I'm just not. <laughs> Okay, you can see I can move in the transcription editor up and down the segment titles. Hit close. Now, if I want to highlight this one, I can. Control. Just highlight it. Again, the markup. Here's zero two. Again, I can hit the down arrow. I can type. I can try my IPA keyboard. See what happens. This didn't work earlier type um I need to type it in n that's obviously not an n this is color but i just want to show that you can type i'm going to go transcription editor uh, show transcription editor ah now go to ipa chart again continent Aka. color Aka. Vowels. Ah. Oh. Allah. Ah. Allah. All right. And again, I can move left and right between transcriptions in the rows, up and down. I need to give this a gloss. I'm just going to go down. Call this material around the neck on a shirt. Hit close. And that's how I can transcribe. Close, file, export, SFM, uh, reference phonetic orthogra orthographic, gloss English. I'm going to put it to. You don't need orthographic, though. You're, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to keep it. And then. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and we'll make a documents, make a new folder example two. Two. Okay. Export. Example two goes with the file name. 
save. Ah, wave files, data files. This is as, okay, that's good to know. So I'm gonna bring it up and these are the files. Um, there's the wave file, it reference 001 and the word English gloss pigment and reference 002 and wave. And so speech analyzer took the long file, cut it up into bits based on segments. So then you can then export this, or actually now that you've got it exported, this is the SFM file it creates. I'm gonna show this with notepad. Plus, 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 my editor of choice. And you can see that here's the lexeme form phonemic, lexeme form orthographic because I happen to have one, gloss English pigment, and here's the reference number, and uh, pronunciation file, that's PF, and this is where it's located. So then you just, when you import it into Flex, I'm not gonna show that now, when you import it into Flex, um, Flex will draw all that in and now you have all this information into your project. Okay, and one last thing I wanted to show is music. I'm just gonna show it real quick. Open, sample, music, and a grace. Open. So this is the audio file grace in a wave. You can see the, the waveform and then you also see the pitch. If you click on music down here on the left, you get more options. And again, I, I can't explain what a lot of these will do, but you can, you can see that it has taken the information, uh, it, it's analyzed the, the, the music for you. I'll give you some, some descriptions. And one thing you can do, it's not working quite right, is you can listen to it, but well, you can listen to it, of course. This is amazing grace. How sweet the sound. And you can actually um, write what you're hearing in, in this, on the staff. Um, it's not working quite right, but I'm going to show that it can be done. So um, I'm in the staff. If I hit the A button, it puts a note. And it puts a note where the A is. And you can move up and down the scale. And I don't know... I can't pick notes worth nothing. So this isn't gonna be right. So I'm gonna put one right here and then I'm gonna hit the click the button and then I'm gonna put another A. And then we'll put another A. So even no. though you saw that blue thing, that's an, a bug, but it does type the A and you well, can- well, Scott, it, yes. Scott, if you, would you back up over that and delete that for a second? Yes. I hit the back button and it's gone. And, and then go down the bottom, click on the word convert. Convert, okay. That That is the music of the semitones up in the picture. It automatically converted to musical notes all of the audio that was there. That's oh. what the purpose of this is. It creates the staff and, and symbols based on the audio. Okay, good. So then you can, I'm just gonna, we're about to stop here, but I wanted to show that you can hit this little icon here. That's the play. You'll play the music and the staff. Now the, the next thing to do is to move your mouse to the middle, the little ampersand. Uh -huh. Up a little bit, no, the ampersand between, yes, there, click on that. Uh, and it plays both, yes. Grace, how sweet the sound. And you can change what it sounds like, the voice, that's the instrumentation. So that was a string, that was a viola. You can go to percussion and make it to acoustic grand piano if you just... All right. And of course, this play button here is just the audio, I think. Amazing grace. The recording, rather. How sweet the sound. Uh, Scott? Yes, Terry. The, the semitone chart on the left that has the little lines mm -hmm. uh, where the zero is has the highest peak. 
that tonal weighting chart shows you the pitch for the song. That's its okay. purpose. It is the it is the most frequently used sound within this recording. That means it is it is the basis of the pitch of all the other sounds in this song. Ah. So it, it's it's an it's an analysis system. That's the point of this mm -hmm. thing. It's not so much that you would transcribe into the uh, uh, chart at the bottom. It's yes. to it, to uh, analyze audio and create from that a musical score. And you can actually click on this and it says export and you can put that into a chart and you can put on a piece of paper and people can type, can, can use it on a piano. They can read the musical notes and recreate the sound. So this export right here? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna hit, yeah. it's already, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll put a number two on this end of this. So I, the differentiates between this one, hit save. And then and you should be able to open open like, the file. 